everybody, welcome back to Vlogmas. Today is day 15. I'm Christy and Get out of the way. Hey, what is and I'm Sal. And today is gonna to be Sal's vlog. That's messed up. Yeah, it is. Hey everyone, welcome back to Vlogmas. <laughs> okay. We're gonna be doing a gym tour today as well as going over our workout routines. Yeah. We talk about the gym a lot because it's a big part of our lives. Um, we work out a lot because we own a gym. <laughs> so we figured why not show fit you guys life. a yeah, fit life, right? Fit life with tacos. And beer. <laughs> beer tasting will be at the end of the video, by the way. Yeah. So we figured we'd show you around the gym, um, go over our workout routines. It's going to be a quick one, but just to give you guys an insight as to what we do. So let's get started with this gym tour. Apparently, Sal's doing everything. Welcome to MTV Creeps. All right. So we're at Watchdog Strength. The first thing you'll notice to my right, your left, is our Christmas tree. Really excited about the Christmas tree. We got it put up this year. Um, and all the members have actually brought their own little decorations. This one's super cute. It's a little weight plate right there. So really excited about that. Going over equipment, we have a bunch of stuff here like medicine balls, battle ropes, um, kettlebells, slam balls. This is stuff that we do here at the gym. We call them our time crunches. They're our high intensity interval training classes. We have this nice pretty green track. It looks really cool with a black background. Uh, this is for like sled pushes and this is where we do a lot of that hit stuff. So the tra track is nice and soft. Um, just makes it a good place to train. Keep following me. Over here we have our dumbbells. Now we don't have a huge dumbbell selection, but that's because we prioritize barbell training here. So with the barbells you can load up a lot of weight, you can do some really good exercises. We utilize the dumbbells more for supplemental work. The rigs are for everything, squats, overhead pressing, bench pressing. You can even deadlift inside or outside, but we also have these nice, cool platforms. Our guys will, that'll go a little bit heavier, they'll deadlift on the platforms. We have bumper plates, a ton of 45 pound weights and stuff. Um, everything you need for a well-organized and efficient program. 999, 1,000, oh, I just did a thousand. These are our cable machines. These are from Rogue, we have two of them. I bought two of them and set them up right here because they'll also work as like kind of a cable crossover. So you can use both of them simultaneously or one or the other. Uh, we get a lot of extra work and volume with these cable machines. They're very, very useful. So the PR board is designed out for them to just pick whatever they want their PR to be. Because I have some folks in here that have never, ever gone to the gym more than three times a week for more than a week, right? So their PR may be, hey, I've been working out consistently three, four times a week for five months. That is a personal record for me. That is the best I've ever done. Go ahead and write it down. If you want to PR your deadlift, your PR your bench, PR whatever, it can be a personal goal that you accomplished and you're proud of, but it's something to give our members an opportunity to just give themselves a pat on the back. So it's not necessarily how much can you squat, how much can you bench, but what are you proud of? I usually like to do four hours of mobility work and stretching. Uh, not really. You guys want to see my super secret warm up technique that I use? It's super secret, so it's between us. I'm on my sweet favorite platform. I got my sweet favorite bar. I got my sweet socks on. And the way I start warming up is I pick up the bar ah, and I move. I'm deadlifting, so I'm kind of going through some deadlift motions. Kind of warm up my upper back. Take the bar, press it overhead, really try to warm up my shoulders. Do a couple body weight squats. All I'm doing is prepping my mind. If I pick up the bar and it feels like it's weightless, it's gonna be a good day. If the bar ends up feeling super heavy, it's gonna be a good day, it doesn't matter. I get into the mindset that I'm gonna train and I just move. So I'm going into my second, I guess you could call it warm-up set, or my third warm-up set. And I'm already at 225 pounds. So for someone like me, I've been training a while. So 225 is pretty easy for me. But if 225 is your one rep max, <laughs> then you're not just jumping into that. What you want to do is be honest with about how strong you are and try to do five or six kind of jumps before you get to your top working weight. So this is going to be my top and final set. I should be doing six repetitions at a three count, the way I count it, one, two, three. Six repetitions um, should be at an intensity of seven. So that means if I go to six, I could have gone to nine. 
How did I come to this weight as my top set? Well, it was basically the way 315 moved, 365, 385. Okay, this should be it, so we'll see. Sometimes what happens is you're expecting something to be your top set and it ends up being easier than you wanted it to be. That's when you have to add more weight and you're like, no. I think I have to go up and wait. Every single one of those reps was smooth, it was clean. It's just mentally, she is not used to moving weight like that. I have five pounds. Okay. Oh, strong. Good, if I move that far fast. And I'm gonna drop down this 125 down by 15%, which means I'm gonna do 105 for two sets of five reps each. I'll be doing overhead press, six repetitions at an intensity of five, six repetitions at an intensity of six, and six repetitions at an intensity of seven. So what does that mean? When I get to my final set of six repetitions at seven, that means I could basically do another three reps if I wanted to. So it's a seven out of 10. This is called auto-regulation. It just lets us um, pick the weight that day. It'll go up or down depending on how fatigued we are, how tired we are, or just anything that's going on. You gotta be honest with it though. So when you're doing a seven, you're doing a six, it doesn't mean it's necessarily easy. Sometimes you gotta tack on a little bit more weight on the bar. Be honest with yourself. Can you move that weight and push yourself? So effort is key. Moving on, touch and go bench. The last one, Still felt pretty easy, felt like it could still do another four or five reps. So let's see how this feels. Magical eagle powers. Yeah, that still felt easy. <laughs> we decided to make the jump to 90 pounds. Um, feeling good today on the bench, so I'm gonna give it a shot. This is actually the most weight I've ever done on bench, so pretty excited. The shoulders. Up. One. Two. The shoulders. Grab it back. Four. Oh, shit. 90 pounds. Congratulations. Yeah, that's the most weight I've ever done. Yeah. Pretty stoked. Okay, take off 15% and do it four more times. Mm. I'm using this foam roller for what I'm calling a wall hack squat. Um, basically, it's a squat variation that's allowing me to really target my quads while taking a lot of the weight off of my lower back and hamstrings and stuff. So you can actually do this at home. If you have a foam roller, maybe a couple of dumbbells or just body weight. Okay, so I have my dumbbells, feet are forward. I'm trying to keep my chest upright the whole way through. Try to get full range of motion. Easy peasy. Help me. Help me, I'm tired. <sighs> I feel like a freaking Flintstone right hey, now. Hey, Flintstone, I'm in. Oh! There it is. Oh. Right, so I have three sets of 12 with dumbbell flat bench. Uh, these are supposed to be an intensity of six. I only have 60 pound dumbbells, so 12 repetitions probably won't do it. Um, but I've been babying my shoulder a little bit, so when I get to 12, I'll see how it feels. Um, if it feels good, maybe I'll go past 12. If it feels like, okay, the shoulder's not happy, I'll stay there. Okay, so I went to 14. I feel that was 
probably like a six. I could have easily gotten to 18, maybe even 20, and that would have been maximum effort. So even though I'm programmed 12 at six, I'm gonna do 14 at six. At least I can hit the correct intensity. And I'm probably gonna shorten my rest times, 60 seconds, just to get a good little chest workout. Up next, I have seated dumbbell overhead press. I have six reps at an intensity of eight for three sets. All of South's friends like to make fun of me because they say I have pterodactyl arms. I can't help it. This is the way I was born, okay? <laughs> Making direct eye contact. I'm gonna finish off my workout with a superset. I'll be doing upright rows and then follow that up by dumbbell curls. And so the upright rows technically should be standing up here with the cables going up, but that doesn't give me a good range of motion. So Sal suggested I do them laying down. Hey guys, that's gonna do it for our workout. Hopefully it gave you some ideas. And if you have any questions on anything that we did or talked about, leave those questions in the comment section and Sal will try to get to those. We still have to do a taste test once we get home. We'll be doing beer number two of the 12 beers of Christmas. That's right. So we're gonna head home and get a beer, but until then, be sure you hit like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. You can be part of Notification Squad. But I think I'm ready for a beer, are you? Oh yeah. Star swipe. Welcome back. We're ready to drink beer number two from the 12 Beers of Christmas by Clown Shoes. We, or I, tasted beer one yesterday, so if you missed that, just look back at our previous vlog. All right, so beer number two is gonna be Reindeer Games. This is a Bavarian IPA. The ingredients are Saz, which I think is a kind of hop, Mandar Mandarina and Mosaic Hops, Munich Malt. The description is beautiful, malt forward and red hued IPA that is crafted with both German and American hops and malts. Let the games begin. The picture is pretty cool. It's like kind of, uh, do you remember those trash can kids comics or whatever? That's kind of what the picture reminds me of. It's just a bunch of kids throwing snowballs at like these There's reindeers. There's a crazy reindeer on there. Yeah, these reindeers that have rocket boots and <laughs> Santa. Santa looks pretty jacked on it, so <laughs> that's pretty cool. Tell us a little bit about the glass for today. So today's glass, so this one is for the beer Hop Solo. For the last few years or so, uh, no label brewing company. I want to say they're in Dallas. They make this Hop Solo for May the 4th. Ah, May the 4th be with you. So that's why Hop Solo. Oh, yeah, so the other side, it's in the shape of like the Millennium Falcon, which is kind with of With the cool. hop. <laughs> yeah, with the hop. Um, and so these glasses are very limited. Yeah. And so every year, like when they say, okay, we're doing it, there's a big line, there's huge demand for these. Um, and we've been able to get about two of them. Yeah. And we always have to go like one or two hours before to wait mm -hmm. to make sure that we're like one of the first in line to get it. So let's get this beer opened up. Let's open it up. My fingers hurt. <laughs> you do it. Okay. All right, Christy's got spider fingers. <laughs> you want to pour? Sure. My pour yesterday wasn't the best. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how right, let's much see how better you do. All right, so let's get a, a whiff mm -hmm. of this here. Christy is actually really good at nosing stuff. We also want to describe, so this one, it's an IPA, but it's a Bavarian IPA, so it has a different color from the one I had yesterday. This it's is more of a foggy. It's like a foggy brown red hue. <laughs> Just yeah, like this is like a like a caramel color. Would you say? I would say ah, it looks like when you have a little bit of coffee left in the cup, <laughs> and then you're about to wash the cup. That's basically what old that looks coffee like. Old color. coffee with some water added to it. Uh -huh. I mean, it looks kind of pretty. I mean, it looks tasty. Yeah. Oh yeah, so it smells a little bit sweet. It's supposed to be like some malt in there. Okay. You can definitely smell the hops. I get to taste first. Mm -hmm. Ladies first. It's um, it has that IPA taste, but it's not as bitter. That's good because that's I don't like IPAs, mm -hmm. but if this has like 
I guess that IPA taste without the bad part, which is the bitter <laughs> part, then all right, we'll give it a shot. We'll I see. can kind of taste that uh, maltiness, actually. I think it's it, it's very close to like an amber to me. That's pretty good, right? I could I could drink that. So it's it it as soon as it hits your tongue, you get the sweetness. You have a little bit of that that hop flavor, that IPA flavor, but it's not. You don't, you don't get the bitter part. Yeah. Um, so it is it is very reminiscent of like a red ale or an amber where it's that just that good, strong flavor. Yeah. But a nice, sweet note that hits it. It, it has a very good flavor. Yeah, this is really good. It's not a, it's not syrupy. So yesterday's beer, when I drank it, I could feel that like coat my mouth, almost like a syrup. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't get that feeling. Yeah. Um, it's pretty smooth afterwards i get that bitterness a little bit later yeah a little bit on the aftertaste yeah yeah let's go ahead and pour the rest of it it pours oh, oh i'm already drunk no. i never drink anymore the sweet nectar oh no, that sweet sweet nectar just a little drop there yeah i never drink anymore. it doesn't have as much of a it doesn't head. give you a lot of head on there yeah. no that color though is really really thick like yeah. a thick beer like that usually gets me pretty excited so I would say that 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 bitter bite isn't as um, present after the second sip. I mean, it, it sits on your tongue for a bit. It's uh, not overpowering. No, it's not overpowering. With with this beer, it came out of the refrigerator. It is um, very satisfying to just be able to take a sip, and you want to get back to that next sip. Yeah. So, like, I am looking forward to the next sip. This is a really good beer. It's a good IPA. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you are not a fan of IPA. I am not. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tasting. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the workout and the gym tour today. We're gonna finish off this beer one sip at a time between the both of us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll be back tomorrow. Bye. Bye.